in a $4 billion multi-decade conspiracy that spans three continents and impacts over 60% of the world's population. China has extended its grimy fingers to capture the whole world. It may be too late to stop the Chinese economic and political engines from taking advantage of the opening created by the United States retreat. In case you do not know what I'm referring to, you are in for a surprise too as I unveil how China plans to overthrow the US. The Belt and Road Program is the main tool China is using to achieve global dominance. Previously known as the One Belt, One Road Initiative, this plan is a strategy to better integrate Great Asia, Africa, and Europe through land and maritime networks, promote trade, and drive economic growth. Initiated in 2013 by President Xi Jinping, the plan sought to coordinate a wide range of investment and development projects from East Asia to Europe. However, you'll be astonished at how fine print can be all that's needed to ignite a country's demise. The plan was promoted as a modern-day iteration of the historic Silk Road that traversed China. For those who may not know, the Silk Road, which is the inspiration for this entire operation, was a network of roads connecting Eastern and Western civilizations almost 1,400 years ago. Embracing a distance of nearly 6,400 kilometers, it was essential in promoting commercial businesses, which in turn facilitated cultural, political, and religious exchanges. While this is what the Belt and Road Initiative appears to be on the surface, its true intentions are much more dangerous. But before diving into the political motives that China wants to fulfill using this ancient road, it is essential that we have a clear picture of the geographical terrain that the Belt and Road Plan spans. The first component is a transcontinental land route known as the Silk Road Economic Belt, which connects China to Southeast Asia, South Asia, Central Asia, Russia, and Europe. This is an entirely land-based link, necessitating the construction of a large system of railroads, energy pipelines, motorways, and simplified border crossings. The other facet that complements is the Maritime Silk Road of the 21st century. This is a sea route that starts at the coast of China and goes all the way to Europe by way of Southeast and South Asia, the South Pacific, the Middle East, and East Africa. More than 60% of the world's population is covered by this fascinating infrastructure. As of March 22nd, 147 nations have signed an MOU with China to become participants in the Belt and Road Initiative. Another intriguing fact about these countries is that they are all strong allies of the United States, either economically or militarily. China's accommodating attitude towards countries that want to join the Belt and Road Initiative is a major factor in its widespread support, contrary to Western countries, which demand a number of things in addition to substantial sway in the economies of the borrowing countries, China does not have this requirement. Several countries that have borrowed money from China as a result of this are now at risk of defaulting on their loan obligations to China. China has extended loans to a sizable number of countries. The United Nations either does not rate these countries in its credit rating because of their significant default risk or ranks them very low because of their poor credit. The plan's flaws become apparent here. China's initiative is driven by geopolitical and economic considerations. This is China's retaliation against the United States' much-touted pivot to Asia as well as a means to create new investment opportunities, cultivating export markets, and increasing incomes and domestic consumption. By taking this step, China is trying to consolidate power over a sizable percentage of international commerce and gross domestic product. The United States is losing clout as China grows stronger due to a combination of factors, including dividend policy and political strife. Because of its vast geopolitical and economic interests, China is now the world's most powerful nation. China will dominate the global finance with its Belt and Road Initiative as it not only has significant political, but also by extension, military stakes too in this game. To illustrate, let's look at Sri Lanka's situation. With an ambitious port project in mind, Sri Lanka reached out to China for help. Without hesitating, China drove headfirst into funding Sri Lanka's aid initiative. Even nevertheless, the port was a dismal failure, with only 34 ships using it in 2012. However, this has resulted in Sri Lanka's massive debt to China. Sri Lanka's government defaulted on its debt and, 
after months of discussions, gave up the port and 15,000 acres of land to the lenders. China's initial goal was obviously to seize control of the port, which it got in the end. China not only got an immense stretch of land and a working port, but it also effectively created a military base in one of the best possible locations, right next to India, China's enemy. Now, China can use the port to pressurize India, discouraging them from any kind of military activities in the region. For this reason, the Global Investment and Lending Initiative is nothing more than a debt trap for developing nations. China's assertiveness is to blame for the economic and strategic mess the United States is in. But America retreat as the country turned inward also played a role in creating the opening that China exploited. The United States has largely fallen short of its promise to improve global infrastructure, trade, and connectivity. These things are being handled by the Belt and Road Plan now. Even so, it is doing a ton more too. But despite all this, a little hope is still left for the US. It is evident that since the United States has reduced spending on R&D, investments, and high-tech infrastructure, China has been able to advance in these areas. Some reports predict that by roughly 2030, China would overtake the United States to become the world's largest economy in nominal US dollar terms. However, by mid-century, it would still be significantly less rich and productive per person than the United States. China's progress towards achieving middle-income status and productivity levels on par with rich countries would be substantially slowed down if growth rates were to level down. On one hand, by 2050, the average Chinese individual will be two to three times more wealthy than they are today and two and a half to three and a half times more productive. Even though it might seem like good news, it actually is not, at least when you compare it to the US with current projections for US growth at roughly 1.6% yearly on average. China would still be significantly poorer and less productive than the US. The quick wins China has been gathering for quite some time now are no longer possible. Additionally, relations between the West and an inward-looking Beijing have been breaking for some time, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine has just hastened this trend. The country has been hit by a string of crises in recent years, with rising debts and defaults among private and government-owned corporations, especially in the real estate industry and at firms like Evergrande. The Lowy Institute analysis identifies China's greatest challenges to the country's future, ahead of low productivity, debt, and overinvestment in infrastructure. They claim that China would have to achieve unprecedented levels of success with productivity-enhancing policies in order to take over the world. However, the recommended steps are not something people should count on as the norm. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time!